I'm just a stunt guy. Trying to look cool in front of the director of this movie. That's her, who I just so happen to have a major crush on. Hello everybody, I'm Nikki Novak and welcome to Fandango's big ticket interview with the cast, the director, and the stuntmen, which I'm so excited about, for the Fall Guy! <laughs> I have to say... Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I have to say, I saw this movie last night and I have fallen for it. And I'm gonna be the first person to do that pun because you're gonna be hearing a lot of that for the next few months. That's good. We so, like that. Thank you for doing that. So, should we jump right in? Sure. Should we have a thumbs up just to let me know you're ready? Let's do it. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> that was very enthusiastic. Thank you. So first of all, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Emily, I heard that you did change your name. You are now only referred to as either Blunt Force or Stunty Blunty. So tell me what you prefer. <laughs> I mean, I was called Stunty Blunty on Jungle Cruise because I was a bit more stunty in that one. Okay. I wasn't quite as stunty in this one. You're pretty stunty. You yeah, more yeah, stunty on that. Great. A little bit more stunty on uh, Stunty Blunty on that one. But, um, but either, e either is great. I mean, Blunt Force trauma is also kind of great yeah. as well yeah. like if you want to go with that one you yeah, delivered okay. a great blow in this movie so you know yes Emily to love, love so much I don't love tea and biscuits blunt, no, and I no. don't love crumpet. Emily boom boom blunt that that one <laughs> <laughs> Where did that one come from? Uh, oh, we don't want to ask. Yeah. We don't want to ask. What happens in Australia stays in Australia. Yeah, just keep it there. <laughs> and what about you, Mr. Gosling? Sexy bacon, did that become the MO? It didn't stick. It didn't stick. I know, it's no. weird, and it you just really And I really pushed tried. it. It didn't <laughs> stick to the pan? Like on the the t-shirts were a little over the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And made, by the way. One thing that I loved about the film, and it did make the trailer, was this this moment where you say to Ryan's character, you say, I hate this stuntman thumbs up thing. Yeah. So I wanted to know from all of you, really, this is an open-ended question to the real stuntmen and to all of you. If I had a dollar for every time on set there was a thumbs up given in the filming of this movie, would I be retired on a beach somewhere with a spicy margarita wearing some sort of swimwear? That's for you guys. Very possible. Probably so. <laughs> the, the, thumb, the, thumbs up. the thumbs up is like, it, it's something you, you use after a stunt that is dangerous and everybody else knows it's dangerous to, to just notify that you're okay. So that way they don't, you know, have to call anybody in and no one's worried. It's like, it's just kind of a go-to. I don't even think we realize we're doing it. It's like you finish something and I do it on the radio in a car or two. I'll be like, I'm okay, I'm okay. You know, so as soon as something's over, it's like, we're good. We're good. Everything's good. You don't but have to worry. But how often are you doing that with a torn rotator cuff, if you're honest? <laughs> well, like, yeah, how, how often are you like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just yeah. switch arms. You're usually switch. doing it no matter what happens. No, I'm good, yeah. really. Uh, and they're like, "What's your name?" I'm not sure, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even if, sure. Like, yeah, even if something does happen, there's so much adrenaline, right? Say that is, you know, torn rotator cuff or whatever. It's still, it goes up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> It is. The toughest dude. You can't believe ever. how tense it is, though, when you're waiting for it. I mean, when we were, when, when, when Logan did his, you know, uh, eight and a half, like record breaking eight and a half <laughs> roll cannon Guinness roll. Book of Guinness Book of or World Records. Ben did like eight fire burns in one day, or car hit, the car the hits. I mean, it was en like endless with, with both of you, you know? It's just, yeah. it's like. You could hear a pin drop on set. It's incredibly tense all morning when you know these things are happening. You're watching them prepare. You're trying to give them space. You know, you're just sort of like waiting for that thumbs up. It becomes almost like everything starts happening in slow motion. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just, it's just an incredible moment when they do it. You know, they just sort of when when you find out that they're okay. It's just like the the, the energy on set is just, it's it's hard to describe. I heard you showed up on set, even though you weren't working that day to watch Logan do his his stunt on the beach. Oh yeah, I mean, and I was always like torn because I was like want to be there, but I don't want to just like he doesn't need me around. He <laughs> knows what he's doing, you know. So it's like I don't want to be. If what if I said something or did something that threw him, you know? I was I was like, it was a balance of wanting to yeah. be there but not right. be too in there that I distracted from his process. Do you feel you guys get into a zen-like state before a big stunt? In a way, yeah. I mean, you, you have, to. have to. The those big, like those big car turnovers and that kind of stuff. It's really hard to not get your heart rate super, yeah. super high, and you got to control that, you know. So you got to get into somewhat of a zen like like state. But I've never had my heart rate so high sitting down, not doing anything, you know. Than when you're getting ready to do that type of stunt. And I think in some of the in car footage, you can see me taking big, deep breaths, like just trying to like, okay, just like gotta 
focus on what we got to do here. That this indie is, this is scary blew and me away, like seeing you yeah. just get tumbled and like ragdolled around in there. It was hot yeah. stuffing. I think it's the reason we're in this business, though. We we love the adrenaline that we get from it. Yeah, um, it's we the love best. the physical challenge. It's it's amazing. There's That's such a really scientific cool. element to it as well. You know, it's right. just bravery and it's skill, but it's also like. It just was amazing to me to see how many things have to be right in order yeah. for it to work. And the I mean, physics like, of for instance, yes, like just the all the work you did with the cars and the engineering of the cars. Like well, he also did that incredible jump at the end of the film. Yeah. It was like all the practicing you did, just even learning that like the density of the sand matters, where the tide is, wow. what's the weather, what's wow. the wind. Everything has to be exactly right for yeah. it to work. It, it really does. I mean, and it's it's a massive team effort to make that stuff work. You know, there's there's guys on tractors out there compacting the sand. There's the special effects crew that is building the car in a very specific way and then learning from it each time we do it to make it better. The picture guy car guys are all part of this as well. It's like it's it's this huge team effort to make this stuff work. You know, and, and so we all have to be working together in trying to produce this product and learning from it each time to continue to make it even better. You know, that's why we rehearse, because we rehearse and we get to see how it goes. And then we go, well, that was great or not. And now we know what to do, you know. So, Ryan, yeah. you did a little bit of stunting in this one, correct? And I've, from my understanding, I bit I could. <laughs> <laughs> so it's my understanding that you jumped off a 12-story building and that you have a fear of heights. Yeah, I was dropped. I didn't. Jump. Okay, okay, it wasn't voluntary. <laughs> <laughs> they dropped me. Who dropped you? Well, I guess. David Leach. No, we, I, we all agreed to no, it. Of yeah, we yeah. Did. It had to happen. I knew it was coming. It's called the fall guy. <laughs> I knew there was going to be a fall. Um, but, but yeah. Also, it's the tail end of a one -er as well. Yeah. So it's so much press because if you decide to kind of get up <laughs> there and go, you know what, I'm not feeling it, yeah. then the entirety of that 20 minute one -er would be wrecked. You know, everything had to go right in the one -er up until that point, you know, in order to, for that to go right. But then also, yeah, just the. Um, but it, look, it was, I have a fear of heights and it was, um, I didn't conquer my fear doing this. Okay, you know? so, yeah, that's what <laughs> I, I was gonna I ask just, you if it made it worse or? What's that? Did it, to do the jump. And what does it feel like? Well, what like? was hard was because these guys are like the coolest dudes ever under pressure and I was like turning to stone and losing my mind <laughs> and I had to act. <laughs> Like I was cool, and I'm like giving that thumbs up, and like totally fine here. Oh, you did the see. thumbs up? Yeah, because well, like they we, they 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 <laughs> on this line, they kind of like let me on. I'm hanging 12 stories, and then I have to act like this is just another day at the office. It's for partly me. It's why just, he had sunglasses on, so you didn't yeah, see the whites of the his terror, eyes. Yeah, you see the terror. The terror. That's true. <laughs> but you know, it's not like that. You know, having done that a, a bunch in my stunt career, it it doesn't get easy. Like it, it's hard for all of us too. You find ways to do it. I mean, he tested the rig a bunch, and yeah. it was also some uh, pucker moments, you call it, when you were oh, up there. Yeah, What's we were, a pucker I, moment? Well, it's more like you like, <laughs> explain that. Squeezing your nose. Oh, OK. <laughs> See, Ryan, that was the tip that you needed. You You're supposed to pucker. Punch your ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll get. No, I was going to say that it wasn't really about, like, I didn't conquer my fear. I just trusted the people involved, you know, between Chris O'Hara and Kier Beck, I had this thing, they, they are the best at what they do. So it's just at some point after I sort of, you know, they did their best like kind of exposure therapy for me. Like we did it in increments and I kept getting <laughs> higher and higher, but I started to see just uh, how, how great at what they do they are. And by the end I was, I, what is I the trusted feeling them. Of falling? Is it instantaneous or, or is it, does it feel like it's taking forever? Um, I think I passed out. I <laughs> woke up and people were like, and I was like. <laughs> Everybody else was doing the yeah. thumbs up. Um, you have an epic karaoke scene. Against all odds, yeah. it brought me back to childhood. This is now going to be playing on a loop. And I think a lot of people, it's going to bring that song back for sure. So I want to know, since a lot of what was shot in this film was practical, was that shot practically? Were you actually singing in that karaoke bar? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, my fault she did like 27 takes of it and so she was like there was a <laughs> my bad <laughs> by the end of the day like fun. no voice left we were kind of but, like figuring out which song would yeah. work so we had various options um i think phil just reigns supreme in people's hearts this is what we found out 
but I'm kind of glad he drowns me out for most of it. It's a tricky thing. I wouldn't say I'm great at karaoke, and if you are great at karaoke, nobody likes those people. So Very I just true. lent into the fact that she's bad at karaoke, and that's what. Ryan, you're the singer now. You can. Is, you wasn't she amazing? Singer, she's <laughs> amazing. We were like, that's what the whole reason was. Will yeah. you please sing in this me. movie? It would be. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the best, and it is. It's such an amazing sequence, and also the way that David kind of edited it. You know, which oh, it's is, which beautiful. Saying, Can we talk about that editing and, and just sort it's of like amazing. from the from the three of you, like such an amazing choice that she's waiting for him for a date, and it's just like, okay, he's not coming. I'm gonna still sing some Phil Collins, and you are desperately he's trying to trying get there. to get there. Just sort of the logistics of of shooting that, and you did your second stunt for the film for that for that scene as well. Yeah with the help of Jean-Claude, too. He was helping to make it happen as well. <laughs> yeah. um, what was the second stunt well, we that I did? Drag you when you oh, yeah, you yeah, dragged me across the bridge. Around. That was, that was genius morning. scheduling. Because it was so early, I was so tired. I kind of like <laughs> showed up, they strapped me in, I get on the thing, <laughs> and then they just dragged me across the Sydney Harbor Bridge a few times. And, and then I went back to my trailer and went to sleep, and I was like, that was a weird dream. <laughs> <laughs> or was it a nightmare? <laughs> I do remember like just <laughs> so the, the road just kicking up on you in that last day because it started to rain. Oh yeah. And you were like, you, you look, it, it oh, just looked, in. oh you were just covered in dirt for the last take that we couldn't use. Sparks. Yeah. Dirt, and then it started to rain. It started to rain and there's the, I think the, I have all what's of now Sydney a term bridge. called bridge lung. I think I got like, <laughs> I, we breathe so much bridge. <laughs> it's just bridge lung, but. Uh, That's like the black lung from Zoolander. Do you remember this? Oh yeah. yeah. He's got it. Yeah. He's got the Sydney Harbor bridge lung. <laughs> you in the car, the follow car through the window, just like. <laughs> <laughs> Master! <laughs> David, I wanted to ask you about the fact that I heard that you, in the scripts, instead of penning out stunts, you put hijinks in Sue's, and you sort of use the elements, <laughs> and you sort of craft these scenes. So I wanted to ask you just sort of overall, because I was in the screening last night, and I have never heard an eruption of applause over an airbag like there was <laughs> when the airbag scene happened. So just talk about sort of bringing back those classic elements of, of stunting and, and giving that 2024 cool, oh. badass spin on it. Thank you. Well, it, it, I mean, I don't know if we'd actually put hijinks and Sue's in the script, but we do sometimes have them as placeholders. Like the action is always seen when I get the script as a placeholder because it's gonna depend on location and then also inspiration because everything's been done so many times and you have to find unique ways to do it. What was really great about The Fall Guy is we had two movies going on, right? We had Metal Storm, Jody's movie, and then we had The Fall Guy. So we could create those two dynamics of contemporary stunts and then the ones that, he, that um, Colt is doing on set could be more of these classics. And we wanted to really sort of lean into the classic stuff like the big car jump, like uh, you know Troy Brown's high fall into the airbag. We knew we had to do practical stunts because this was a celebration of our whole industry. And uh, so we leaned into it. And again, like both movies allowed us to do, we could do the, 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 the truck chase or the, 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 the bin and like the Phil Collins sequence was more contemporary stuff. And then we got to do the classics. So the movie lent itself. To it. It's kind of worth noting, I think that they did this really cool thing where um, the airbag itself that he falls into, that was Troy Brown's father's airbag. And Bob Brown. Bob Brown, yep. who is sort of a legend, legend of high fall. High and Troy, like, you know, grew up watching his dad take these falls. And uh, I think the last fall his father took was onto that bag. Yep. And then the bag got sold to someone in South Africa. And they tracked it, sourced it, brought it back. And Troy was able to fall into that bag. And when it was over, he signed it next to his dad's name. And he called his mom. And it just wasn't a dry eye. And his, da was and his dad, was dad was there to watch. At the bottom of when he hit the bag. It's a really, like, the <laughs> community is really small. And it's really tight knit. And so everybody knows everybody. And so we really wanted, again, lean into the nostalgia of all these, you know, these great stunt performers from the past. And every, everyone got involved. Ben and Logan. Uh, a couple questions for you guys. So Ben, how does someone prepare themselves to be hit by a car going 25 miles an hour? And Logan, what is more intimidating? And congratulations again on your Guinness Book of World Records. But what is more intimidating, rolling a car at 8.5 times around or jumping a car across a crevasse 25 feet? 
225 feet. 225, yeah, 225 feet, yes. Feet. Those are both uh, equally intimidating, and they, 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 it's not like they don't scare me. They definitely are scary. That's, that's the part that keeps you safe. Is, what would you pick? I, I, think, I think the jump, because the, the, the cannon roll, that one's going to be a wreck. You know it's going to be a wreck, so you prepare for that, and, and you get prepared. It's going to be a wreck. Oh, yeah. like, like, there's no other way to do it. So, but the jump... The jump is something you have to uh, you have to make, you know. So there's there's all these other possibilities that could happen, and so that one is a little bit scarier because of those other things that could possibly happen, you know, like if you didn't make it or whatever, you know. So that one is more intimidating, and the other one is beats your body up more. <laughs> but the the jump is definitely a little bit scarier, and it took a little more time to sort out and figure out exactly how to do it safely. Ben? For me, it was, um, it was the first time I did a car hit as well. And uh, that's one of those stunts that you know is going gonna, is gonna to suck. Um, <laughs> I, you know it's going to hurt. Um, and it's quite funny. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but I, um, I asked you, I was like, do you have any advice to how to get hit by a car for the first time? Because I know you've done it before. Yeah. Um, it's a strange uh, experience asking the director. Hey, uh, <laughs> on the, what did I say? What did I say? I can't quite remember. You were just get like, your, make, get, get your make hips your, above the hood. Get your <laughs> hips above the hood. Make yourself light, um, and just you know, you were just like, you're you're very aware of your your spatial awareness is great. So, um, but I asked you, I was like, where do you want me to land? Like in a perfect world, where do you, where do you want me to roll to? You drew a little line on the floor, and uh, and I saw that line when I was coming down. I was like, that's my line, and I just like, that's great. Well, I, I would just say this: like, there's not many. You usually can't. <laughs> that's like. I put a mark on the ground, like nobody ever hits a mark after a car hit. Yeah. <laughs> but you're such a talented performer, like you're just one of those special stunt performers that can do it. And um, I was, I had no doubt, like I'll put a mark there, he'll probably find it. Yeah. I don't know how, I, as a performer, could have never found it. I usually just got up on the hood, let the car take me, yeah. protect my neck, and that was it. There's so much fantastic romance in this film, oh. and I absolutely loved it. And Ryan, I'm going there. You are the undisputed king of the forlorn, lovelorn look. <laughs> the look at the end of the, <laughs> at the end of La La Land, Seb at that piano, that look to Emma, the look to her in the truck, that forlorn Ryan Gosling. It's the special. Oh. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, terrified oh, by this question. Oh, I wanted oh, no. to know for aspiring actors out there, sort of, like, what is They're this? They're talking about getting hit by cars. <laughs> 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 Making these 125 foot jumps. And Ryan, what's it like to give a love lord? Yeah, you do a look, but you do it better than anybody. Oh, thanks. So what are, what are the, <laughs> what is, <laughs> what are the tips to giving <laughs> the greatest cinematic love lord looks? Walk us through it. Feel free to demonstrate to camera of, uh, if you like, want to. Like uh, confusion. Okay. And like <laughs> looking for your glasses. You're just kind of like looking for your glasses. Find the lens. He can't Find just the lens. Turn it on. You're confused and you're like looking for your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No, is that it? Oh, you can't see it looking for. Emily, you did a great one too. Do you want to? Do you want to demonstrate? When did I do it? You looked back at him. It was kind of like I don't want to let him know, but I lo love him, but I still love him, but I'm not going to let him know. No, I think I was like your glasses are over there. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was quite clear, you know, they're there. Who is the bigger Swifty, Colt or Ryan Gosling? Oh, oh. Well is so Ryan Gosling. Oh, oh my really? God, yeah. yeah. You're a Swifty, mm -hmm. big time. Who isn't? Yeah. Favorite song? Mm. Full Summer. I don't know, I mean, All Too Well right now has a real soft spot in my heart. Stuck in your head? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about you, Emily? I'd say Cruel Summer is um, pretty up there for me. But for real, this, this, one of my favorite scenes in the movie was when, and I know this was sort of a thing, that when you were rehearsing, you had a hat on, and then you said, just do it for the day of filming. And when you zipped her toggle, Everyone I went, that's that, love. But what about us. when you do your own toggle? That's even better. No, but yours is you go, You go, it's a set thing. No, but mine's okay. like defiant. Mine's defiant, and yeah. yours is like sweet and tender. But if you can just talk a little bit about creating that chemistry between the two of you, because you both have done some epic films with other co-stars, but just sort of how you created that dynamic between the two of you that was... Well, Emily's real nickname is The Chemist. <laughs> <laughs> she just creates chemistry wherever she goes. I feel like you could have you chemistry can't... with a doorknob, though. I feel like you can do it. I've met a few. Yeah? It uh, <laughs> charmed me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
And he, Ellen's like, I'm like, I got nothing else I to add. I think don't have to answer it. It's just, he's a delight. It was so easy. It was effortless. You know, I think sometimes you can kind of fake it, but then it's much easier when it's, you know, fun as hell. After this film, and we've been talking about stunts needing a place at the Oscars. Mm. Yes. So if any of you have anything to say about sort of giving the thumbs up to that or, or what you think about that. Well, how giant. about them really uh, supporting us on the, Acad on the Academy Awards this year? We really appreciate yeah. that, guys. Oh, come, come on. on. You know, it's hard to separate the history of cinema with the history of action. They're, they're sort of mutually, they're just, they're, they're intertwined. I think the first successful film ever was The Great Train Robbery, and it's action, and it's stunts. Yeah. And it's what made people fall in love with cinema. And then Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd, yeah. Chaplin, it's all, all stuntmen, all stunts, all action. It's uh, some of our, the most iconic moments in movie history are, are action or performed by, by stunt performers. It's, it's really like hard to separate the success of, of cinema as an art form from what action and, and stunt performers have, yeah. have contributed to it. So it just seems like it's time. No about time. It's time to flip about the time. script. Flip the script. Time. No it's more time. in the shadows. And no one risks more than them. Yeah. You know, no, Literally no one no on one. set risks more than, than they do. And they do it selflessly and with such humility and with joy. And stunt performers are some of my favorite people on a crew. And it's just insane that that category has been living in the shadows because we celebrate every other category. It's not about mystique or maintaining mystique. We just have to broadcast what they do and the love and soul that goes into it, you know. And there is a weird secrecy around it. Like I started on a kid's action TV show and I, I've had a stunt double my whole life and there's always this moment where they come in, they do the hard stuff, they risk everything and then they leave and then there's this understanding like more than any other department, everyone else gets credit but there's some kind of unspoken thing where you kind of pretend they they weren't there, they didn't do it, and it's very strange, and it's just so cool to be a part of something that's like, just not doing that anymore, that wants to sort of turn the spotlight back onto them and, and highlight how much they contribute and, and, and that it's an art form. I concur, but never sell your love, Lauren, look short, because that is an art and a skill in itself. <laughs> 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 Thank you all so very much. Thank and you. can we end with a thumbs up while I remind everybody that tickets are on sale now for The Fall Guy at Fandango. It's an epic um, film. You got to check it out. Get your tickets. <laughs> Get your tickets. <laughs> Get your tickets. <laughs>